there was a nucleus of about six of us who had this interest and we all were split apart in different neighborhoods. We had a little neighborhood here and Sam was over in his little neighborhood making Super 8 movie. He was, Sam did a lot of magic and so films seemed like a natural extension for him to do that. So he was doing these silly little movies and I was doing um, silly little movies. And another guy, Scott Spiegel, who co-wrote Evil Dead 2, was making like Three Stooge ripoffs where he'd use the actual soundtrack but put in his own visuals. And then we kind of all hooked up in high school and then we found that you know, one guy had costumes and another guy had some, had a good camera. So we combined all of our facilities and then we were able to, on weekends, we just would go out and shoot. We would sit down and pretend that we were businessmen. That was all part of the filmmaking process. We thought we had to do it because it never occurred to us to go to California because it was 3,000 miles away. And we thought we'd have as good a chance raising money independently and it finally worked. We had dentists, a couple of dentists go in. We had some real estate people. But it was tough to get people who had money in, who, who were merchants, who owned stores, because a lot of those people had money and we, we would approach them. They're used to paying money and getting heads of lettuce or bottles of wine. And we wanted them to give us money for nothing, for this movie that might be successful, might not. And I remember we showed this first little Super 8 movie in the, the detergent aisle of a grocery store after it closed to a couple of merchants and they didn't invest. But we really went to, we went to absolutely anybody who was financially capable of losing all their money. Uh, I was the pseudo hero, Ash, who was really just one of five generic people at the beginning. And then through a, a trial by fire, I kind of wise up a little bit and live. Why pseudo hero? Because he's kind of an idiot. You know, if he hears a sound, he goes outside. He looks through doors that you know he shouldn't. So he's not really very smart. But then that's the stake for the whole movie, isn't Oh, it? you have to. If you can't, if they were smart enough not to go to the cabin, you wouldn't have a movie. So, you know, they show up and it's a creepy place. Well, let's go in. You know, and they find a tape recorder with some weird sayings on it. Oh, that sounds great. Let's play that. <laughs> you know, and then people are possessed and like, oh, what do we do now? And uh, you can't be too smart the first couple of times. So you let some monsters kill some innocent people. We were dealing with unions for the first time, and so we didn't schedule it properly. Again, we didn't budget it properly. So we started to go over schedule, over budget, and the studio people said, you know, they'd fly in their, their uh, cutthroat men and say, you know, what pages do we tear out here, you know? And so the script would be revised in order to stay on schedule, and it was a lot of give and take. We didn't have nearly the freedom as our first film because investors aren't going to come on the set. A dentist isn't going to say, are you sure that camera angle is right? You know, how many pages did you shoot today? They don't care. So we, they never set foot on the set, but with Crime Wave, they were in our face all the time, and it was a very tough experience. We didn't want to create a movie that would have, you know, cause kids to have nightmares. That wasn't the goal. It was just to give them a roller coaster ride for 90 minutes and they could go home and forget about it. And so Evil Dead 2 was even more like that, really. We wanted to have a mass or a wider appeal. So we took out some of the real gore and put in a couple of Three Stooges type gags. I think he learns an incredible amount every time he makes a movie. And it, I think that's a good indication because the more he makes, I think the better he's going to get.